this morning is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not shut, so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here ends the reading of this morning's scripture. So as I was growing up, I often heard the expression, and I'm sure you guys heard this as well, you don't talk about politics or religion with other people. The thought being truly that you don't bring up topics that might be hot button issues for others that may make them uncomfortable. Now I think in our world today, we can pretty much throw that idea out the window. It seems as if politics are a free game to be discussed with anyone and everyone that you meet. So where does that leave religion? Is it still something that's taboo to talk about with others? Well, the truth is, I don't think it ever has been. Indeed, if we are following our calling to make disciples of all the nations, then we must be willing to discuss religion with people. Now, I know that this can be a difficult thing for a lot of us to do. We don't want to offend others. We don't want to be pushy. And we feel like we ourselves are not good enough examples to talk to other people about God. Well, we have to get over these ideas. And we have to be willing to work towards making up for any shortcomings that we feel we may have. Because, brothers and sisters, we know that the only way to the Father is through the Son. You know, the thing I hear from most people when the topic of religion is brought up, especially it seems to be my generation and, and maybe a bit younger, something like this is almost always said back. I'm not religious, but I am spiritual. Now, I've often wondered, what exactly does that mean? And as I've thought about it more and more, I find that it means different things to different people. But generally, it means about three things. The first is, someone says that and they say, I believe in God, but I don't like his churches. For some, it's a way of saying, you know, I believe there could be a higher power up there, but I just can't commit myself to calling it God. And for some, it's an easy way of getting out of having to talk about religion with somebody. What does the idea of spirituality mean to you? Specifically, if you are a follower of Jesus, what does the idea of Christian spirituality mean to you? And what would it take for us to be living out our own Christian spirituality? See, oftentimes we think about those others that are out there and their constant search for new spiritual ideas. And we consider them to be on the wrong path. However, whenever we encounter them, someone who is searching, truly searching, it would benefit them if we were willing to share our own spiritual beliefs in Christ with them. We have to be willing to help those that are out there on a spiritual search. What we find oftentimes with those that are searching spiritually is they tend to move from one thing to another. So this week, we're trying Buddhism. Next week, 
we're going to try yoga. Next week, we're going to try transcendental meditation. Okay? Now, all of these things are truly a search for spirituality. So when we find those people that are searching, we need to be willing to talk to them about our spirituality in Christ. And for those of us that accepted Christ as our Savior, we have to continue to grow our spiritual life as well. I, wanted to, I want you to think of it this way. When you're a child, you are dependent upon others to take care of you. And this is also where you find yourself as a new Christian. So when we meet new Christians, what we need to be doing is helping them along. So when you're a new Christian, you aren't sure where you should begin your studies. You aren't sure exactly what doctrine it should be that you're following. And so in order for you to grow as a young Christian, it's necessary for you to find people that are more experienced in the faith. And this way, they can help you grow your own spirituality. Now, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, and that is where you stop with your spiritual growth, you're almost living a life like this. It's like you have a ticket to a baseball game. And you go to the game, and you get your jersey, and you get your nachos, and you get your hot dog, and you get your big foam finger, and you're all excited to be there. And the game is starting. And then when you go to sit in your seat, your view of the field is being blocked by a giant steel beam. And I've been told I use too many sports metaphors when I preach, so here's a different way of thinking about it. You're at a concert and you're so excited to be there and you can hear the band getting ready to go on and it's wonderful that you're experiencing it with the ones around you and it's getting ready to start and then you get to your seat and sitting directly in front of you is the tallest person that's ever walked the face of the earth and you're never going to be able to see what's going on. So you're only getting part of the experience and truly you're missing out on the greatest things that can be part of the experience. It's just like this if you're not growing spiritually. You are missing out on so much more that God wants for you. So then how do we grow ourselves spiritually? Well, there are three things that basic uh, needs to Christian spiritual growth. Uh, and these are taken from a book by uh, Kenneth Boa. Three really good ideas here. The first thing we need to consider is time. You cannot expect to know everything that there is to know about growing in Christ as soon as you've made that decision to become a Christian. It's like anything else in your life. It takes time to develop. One of the things I talk about with my own children, whenever they're starting something new, is you can't expect that you're going to be great the first time that you try something. And chances are, it's going to take some time for you to get good at what you're doing. And you're probably going to fail a lot along that journey. And that's true of Christian spiritual growth as well. You have to be willing to stick with it in order for it to get better and for it to grow. The other issue that deals with time is, how are you spending your time? See, when we commit ourselves to making sure we spend our time wisely in the pursuit of growing ourselves spiritually, that is where we will see the greatest strides. It's the same thing as if you were, again, starting baseball. If you want to get better, you have to devote time to that thing. The second thing we need to consider when it comes to growth spiritually is obedience. Are we doing things that are Christ-like? Are we living our lives in a way that would make Jesus proud to say that we are one of his? And that applies to all areas of your life. You see, it is easy to be a Christian on Sunday morning. It is much harder to be obedient to Christ Monday through Saturday. That is when the trials and tribulations of this world and the temptations are before us. But if we dedicate ourselves to living our lives in an obedient fashion, we will see continued spiritual growth. The final thing to consider when you're trying to grow in Christ spiritually is this idea. And it's that Spirituality and Christian spirituality is relational. So what does that mean? Well, when we consider Christ's ministry, it was not something that was done simply by himself. 
He was constantly surrounded by others, constantly showing them the way in which they should be living their lives. So while we can live a life that is Christ-like on our own, it is much easier for us to grow spiritually if we are involved with others. And if we are living out our commanding obediently to God, we should be doing everything to take the message of Christ to others and make disciples of them. And it is all so much easier for us to grow when we do so in communion with one another. I cannot begin to tell you the amount of lessons that I have learned from others in the church. And I don't just mean the pastor. So why even bother? Why do you do any of this in the first place? Why do you need to grow spiritually? Well, when we grow spiritually, that is when we can enjoy the fruits of the Spirit. In Galatians, we are told that the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, does all those things sound like something that's wonderful to have in your life? So as we go forth today, let us commit ourselves to growing spiritually in Christ. Let us commit ourselves to helping others grow spiritually in their lives. And let us commit ourselves to helping those that come to Christ so that they may know the fruits of the Spirit. So my challenge is for you this week, I'm actually going to give you some multiple choices. So I just want you to pick one thing this week that you can do to grow spiritually. To be more obedient, to be more involved in the study and the teaching of the word, or to be more involved in the service to others. In Christ's name, amen.